Do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course, to my dying day, we'll stand by every word of my testimony. I think vast majority of this trial was played out on social media. I think that this trial is an example of that gone haywire, gone amok, and the jury is not immune to that. You think it, the jury saw it? How could they not? I think even the most well-intentioned juror, it would have been impossible to avoid this. Every single day I passed for three, four, sometimes six blocks, city blocks lined with people holding signs saying burn the witch, death to Amber. After three and a half weeks, I took the stand and saw just a courtroom packed full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans who were vocal, energized. Can you put into words how that felt? This was the most humiliating and horrible thing I've ever been through. I have never felt more removed from my own humanity. I, I, I felt less than human. Let's go back to the, the day of the verdict. Were you feeling confident? <sighs> That's a great question. I wish I could say yes to that. I want to say yes to you, but it, would, it wouldn't be true. Even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me, look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. There was another trial handled in, with the same, dealt with the same substantive issues that had even more evidence in. In fact, mine, my evidence was largely kept out, really important pieces of evidence kept out done differently, handled differently by a, a judge instead of a jury. Some evidence is admissible in a UK court that is not admissible in a US court. Do you think that maybe he just had better lawyers? I will say his, his lawyers did a, certainly a better job of distracting the jury from the real issues. For some people, they just were frankly disgusted by the whole thing and don't have much sympathy for either one of you. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I would not blame the average person for looking at this and how it's been covered and not think that it is Hollywood brats at their, at their worst. I'd, but what people don't understand is it's, it's actually so much bigger than that. This is, a, this is not only about our First Amendment right to speak. But here's the thing about the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects free speech. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. And that was the issue in the case. Yes, exactly. You can't go into, the free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. We get the concept of free speech from the Greeks. My understanding of what that means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. But truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke and I spoke it to power, and I paid the price. In the closing arguments, the Depp lawyer said, called your testimony the performance of a lifetime, and said you were acting. What do you say to that? Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers. I'm the performer. I had listened to weeks of testimony. Uh, insinuating that or saying quite directly that, you know, I'm a terrible actress. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused how I could be both. The Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence. Did you? I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes, it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt. You say you were responding, but there are, is evidence. There are tapes in which you acknowledge hitting. There are tapes in which you say, I started the fight. I know much has been made of, of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being uh, edited 
what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. It was evidence of a negotiation of how to talk about that with your abuser. But I am looking at a transcript that says, he says, you start physical fights and you say, I did start a physical fight. I can't promise you I won't get physical again. I mean, this is in black and white. I understand context. But you're testifying and you're just telling me today, I never started a physical fight. And here you are on tape saying you did. As I testified on the stand about this, is that when your life is at risk, not only will you take the blame for things that you shouldn't take the blame for, but when you're in an abusive dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the resources that say you or I do with the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white, because it's anything but when you're living in it. But then there are other times, there's another tape where you're taunting him and saying, oh, tell the world, Johnny Depp, I, a man, am a victim of domestic violence. 20 second clips or the transcripts of them are not representative of even the two hours or the three hours that those clips are excerpt from. Could your side have just put the whole three hours in then? I'm not a lawyer. As I testified to, I was talking in those recordings as a person, an extreme amount of emotional, psychological, and physical distress. He and says he never hit you. He can't. Never. Is yeah. that a lie? Yes, it is. What about the witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence? I've seen firsthand how people will file rank and support the person they depend on. Did they all come in and lie in court? I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm here to just kind of talk about it from what it felt like for me as a person who sat there. When I asked his lawyers, why do you think you won? And the answer I got was because she never took responsibility for anything she did in the marriage. I did do and say horrible, regrettable things throughout my relationship. Uh, I behaved in horrible, almost unrecognizable to myself ways. There's so much, I have so much regret. I freely and openly and voluntarily talked about what I did. I, I talked about the horrible language. I talked about being pushed to the extent where I didn't even know the difference between, you know, um, right and wrong. I will always continue to feel like I was a part of this, like I was the other half of this relationship because I was. And it was ugly and could be very beautiful. It was very, very toxic. We were awful to each other. You know, I made a lot of, a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. But I've always told the truth. There's a text message where Johnny promises total global humiliation for you. Do you feel like that came true? I know he promised it. I testified to this. I'm not a, a good victim, I get it. I'm not a likable victim, I'm not a perfect victim, but I, when I testified, I asked the jury to just see me as human and hear his own words, which is a promise to do this. It feels as though he has. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? Of course. I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm scared that no matter what I do, no matter what I say or how I say it, um, every step that I take will present another opportunity for this sort of uh, silencing, which is what I guess a defamation lawsuit is meant to do. It's meant to, <laughs> meant to take your voice. Life had seemingly moved on and you decide to write an op-ed. Why did you do that? Because the op-ed wasn't about my relationship with Johnny. But it alluded to him. 
it, it was unmistakable. You know, what the op-ed was about was, um, you know, me loaning my voice to a bigger cultural conversation that we were having at the time. Did you worry, gosh, I'd love to be a person weighing in on these cultural issues, but that's gonna stir this all up again. I obviously knew it was important for me not to make it about him or to do anything like defame him. I had lawyers, teams of lawyers, review all the drafts of this. When you wrote this op-ed, it was the height of Me Too. Legions of powerful men being canceled, losing their jobs. Um, did you want that to happen to Johnny Depp? Of course not. Of course not. It wasn't about him. This was uh, a hoax, is according to his team. Why didn't I cooperate with the police? As I've testified before, and I will stand by until my dying day, I didn't want to cooperate with them. I didn't want this to be out. I didn't want this to be known. I didn't want to cooperate with them because I didn't want this to be, I didn't want to get him in trouble. If it was a host, I could have done that. But five days later, you went to court and it came out. Five days later, I made the decision to stand up for myself and protect myself. You can't get a restraining order in private, which of course I didn't understand the night when the cops were called. An employee of TMZ testified at court and said that TMZ was tipped off about when you were going to be going to the courthouse and on what side of your face bruises would be apparent. Did you tip off TMZ? I was going to say, you certainly didn't get tipped off by me or Did anyone in my... you know tip off Absolutely. TMZ? Why would they? No. You, you ask no one to do that? As I testified to before, it had nothing to do with me. There are different incidents that you testified to, and the DEP legal team would put up pictures of you publicly right after that or in the days following and saying that why are there no no bruises again it's that thing if you have bruising if you have injuries it's fake if you don't have any then it's then you weren't injured you had promised to donate the seven million dollars of your divorce settlement to charity it was revealed at trial that you haven't done so yet however they played a tape where you stayed on the air that you have donated it do you think that raised questions as to your credibility with the jury? I made a, a pledge, and that pledge is made over time by its nature. When and you say I donated, you know that everybody thinks that you've donated it, not that you've pledged it. So for the jurors sitting there, do you think they felt like that was you getting caught in a lie? I, I don't know, because so much of the I feel like so much of the trial was meant to cast aspersions on who I am as a human, my credibility, to call me a liar in, in every way you can. And that more. was the trial. It was a credibility contest. And that I, was it. This is another one of the examples where if you pull back and you think about it, I shouldn't have to have donated it in an in, in effort to be believed. I shouldn't have had to earmark the entirety of that in order to have you uh, shouldn't have but once you said you did right which is where it was intended to go how do you see your future now i get to be a mom like full time you know where i'm not having to juggle calls uh, with lawyers one day you may want to tell your daughter about this or have to tell your daughter about everything that you've gone through what would you want to say I think no matter what, it will mean something. I did the right thing. I did everything I could to stand up for myself and the truth. On the first day of the trial, you issued a statement and part of the statement said, I still have love for Johnny. Yes. Is that still true? Yes. After everything? Absolutely, absolutely. I love him. I loved him with all my heart. And I tried the best I could to make a deeply broken relationship work. And I couldn't. I have no bad feelings or ill will towards him at all. I, I know that might be hard to understand or it might be really easy to understand if you've just ever loved anyone. It, it should be easy.